Um, welcome back to the podcast today. We have a very special guest returning for the second time, uh, Carolina Ravasa. She has a new game out, uh, Dead Island 2. And um, I, I messaged her about Shatterline because I loved, I loved that game and I, loved, I could tell that that was your voice. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to talk to you today. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Super happy to be here again. Thanks yes. for having me. Last time, I think reports of a Overwatch 2 had just, or like, I think you might have played it, um, but, oh yeah. I, I played it at BlizzCon I think, uh, I think before I, the pandemic, because mm-hmm. uh, they, they let us play a little section, but I'm so terrible at it. I wouldn't really consider myself, that I, I wouldn't say that I played it, but <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, how has that been like, um, kind of like a resurgence of um, a new re- a new release of probably something that you hold very dearly to your heart? Um, and did you do, how much new stuff did you do for the game? Um, you know, it's always exciting just when there's like a revamp because we feel like you guys get new material and uh, you can get excited to play something that you love so much and have it like feel fresh. So... Mm-hmm. Uh, I love that. I know that people have mixed feelings about 5v5, so I always la- ask, you know, how people are doing with that. And, and they give me their whole spiel about, like, <laughs> missing another tank. And so I, I, I like that, that people love to share their, their thoughts on, on how their gameplay has changed. Um, I love that we did new, ga- new voice lines. Um, we, we recorded a lot of new stuff just so that, again, like, regular gameplay felt fresh. And then there's obviously like cool new interactions with characters. I have a lot of voice lines with Sigma, which I find really sweet and endearing because it kind of shows off that they're that they're good friends. <laughs> and uh, you know, I make fun of um, Cassidy, which I love. And uh, I loved doing the new um, that Halloween event called the Wrath of the Bride. Mm-hmm. That was a very different take on Sombra. She, we were kind of going for like this like haunted house kind of hokey feel, and Sombra is totally the opposite of hokey <laughs> and that would make her cringe so i i had to kind of find with the director like a new take on on how her sarcastic self would would do this you know in a in a haunted house so that was fun that was really exciting and different yeah i mean i i absolutely i love the fact that you know we got all this new content because i didn't play a ton of overwatch one but like i got into it because i was like new game uh fresh stuff but i i feel like even I knew that there was a lot of new interactions and stuff and I don't know I thought it was fantastic and I love what they did with it um cool what when it when it comes to like because I feel like Overwatch as a cast is very unique you don't always get that when it comes to like a cast of actors that still want to be a part of something that released so long ago and that you guys are uh from the outside looking in at a tight new uh tight-knit group um was there a moment when it came to like valorant or any other project where it kind of emulated that because i feel like valorant um as like the cast is starting to get more together like i saw you get you and miranda and celine met Mm -hmm. up together like yeah is that is that like a a good feeling for you to to have that interaction with the other voice actors absolutely i mean i think it's we know that you guys love it so Mm -hmm. that's partly why we do it but i also think uh you know only somebody in that game will understand being a part of the game right like the apex cast is close because they share this thing in common so i think that uh overwatch did give us a lot of new friendships and we've kept them regardless of if there was an overwatch 2 or not i would still be seeing a lot of the overwatch one cast members because we love each other so much uh the valorant peeps are kind of all over and Mm -hmm. i think because it launched in the pandemic we hit we didn't have an immediate like get together the way blizzcon sort of got us together at the end of their uh whole weekend event so it was a little bit different but i think that we all share the fact that we're in the same game and it's very exciting Mm mm-hmm yeah, I was thinking about that as well. The 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 timing of everything when it, when Valorant launched, um, that it's kind of unfortunate for all the cons and stuff like that for everything to get for everyone to get together. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so Dead Island, uh, I watched. I haven't played it yet, but I watched the intro 
on YouTube, and I I knew exactly which character you were. Um, what was that experience like? And um, when did I kind of just for people who don't know how long before like you get the audition or you get told that you're gonna do this thing? How long is that process for this time around? I can't remember from auditioning. Maybe I got a call back like one or two weeks later and I worked with the director and we, cause I had made her sound really young cause they'd said she was super young. And then it was like, we had to find her sounding more like me with a little bit of an accent. And um, I channeled by Michelle Rodriguez, but um, we recorded before. No. Okay. It's all coming back to me. <laughs> okay, yeah, I yeah. did the call back from my closet, not this one, but my other apartment. So, so I do remember that I was, it was in the pandemic and then we recorded, oh my God, 2021, maybe. Um, I did a lot of sessions and it was like every day for three weeks going into the studio for four hours. Um, the difference with this kind of game is that it's not just me doing lines as a first person shooter you just kind of like recording alone um and you don't have a lot of scene work unless we mm -hmm. do an, a cinematic but for this one it was uh you get to play six different characters and at the beginning of every scene or level or whatever uh there's a whole interaction that goes on with other non-playable characters in the game so they've set those up in a way that the way we record is we see everything that's happening and we have to drop our lines in so I would get like a non-playable character saying, hey, Carla, you need to do this. And then I'd have a certain amount of time where I'd be like, I don't want to do that, man. What do we do instead? And then he'd talk. And then I'd say, but they've written six different scripts so that every other character has a similar but different interaction mm -hmm. for the beginning of that scene. So I thought that was kind of cool because it lets you act a little bit more like you're mm -hmm. interacting with other characters. So that's cool. And I got to see a lot of like the scenes play in front of me because they've already animated them. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. It was, a, it was a different experience because it was definitely not like Valorant or, or Overwatch. So uh, I enjoyed it just as much. Um, and I hope people are into I don't like zombies, really. <laughs> and I definitely would have moments where I'm like, oh, God, because I'd watch how, like, she's killing a zombie or whatever. And mm -hmm. I'd have to react to, like, ah, and the blood splattering <laughs> and stuff. Uh, so that was pretty gross. But still really a cool experience, you know? Yeah, because like you said, uh, I've heard it a lot from a lot of the voice actors that you're not seeing stuff. And especially when, you know, maybe there's some times where in an interaction in a game like Valorant or Overwatch, you might get, if the other character has already recorded their lines, you may get a line. But, like, a lot of times you're not, you know, feedback. You're just kind of saying the lines alone. Yeah. And so do you have, like, is it a completely different experience or do you have a preference between the both of them? I mean, we, we just learn to play in all scenarios, you know, mm -hmm. um, for animation. Sometimes we get to do scene work with somebody and sometimes we just do our lines and then know what the line before was. Uh, so we've just learned to sort of like be creative in that environment. Uh, in this case, I, I was acting opposite pre-recorded stuff already. So I didn't, it wasn't an actual real interaction because I, it wasn't like I'm looking at a human that's giving me like in the moment feelings. Yeah. It's like pre-scripted and I'm jumping in to say a thing in between and then listening to their response. So it's also, it feels a little bit, it can feel a little bit boxed in, but at the same time we have to find the creativity within that space to make the interaction real. So I mean, in a, in a perfect world, I would love to just act opposite a live human always so we can find new things and be creative in the moment. But that's just not how these animals work you know mm -hmm. so we've learned to 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 work within those confines has has voice acting got started to get back to like are you doing a lot of uh like in studio stuff now um yes i i well i think the voice actor can choose but some studios prefer for you to go in just so their sound engineer can take care of everything and mm -hmm. i always prefer that so that i can move in the booth comfortably and scream and they take care of like pops and stuff or uh you know the the the, um, the ac is so much better because like i get into this little closet and yeah. i'm very confined so i can't like act things out um mm -hmm. so i'm always going to prefer going in studio but sometimes it's nice if it's just a couple lines i can just do them in my closet and i don't have to drive an hour you know so yeah yeah that's super 
I, I love the the idea of the the closet. Like I always hear every voice actor say, like, yeah, I recorded that in my closet. I love that. Well, because I can't really call. I mean, I could say booth and sound really fancy, <laughs> but it's actually my closet, and I have like winter gear on both sides, and my, mm -hmm. you know, I have padding everywhere, and it's a really nice mic, so it's a booth, but it's a closet, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah. I I was actually curious. This just popped into my head. Um, the I there's a TikTok. This was a while ago, but it was you and I. I don't want to butcher his last name, but Dan is it Poppenmeyer? I did not know you guys were connected. How did how did that have you guys been connected for a long time? Uh, yeah, I'm lucky enough to work on his new Disney show. Mm. Um, so after Phineas and Ferb and Milo's Murphy's Law, Milo Murphy's Law, he created a new show called Hamster and Gretel, oh, and it's yeah. on Dis it's on Disney Plus right now. And I play Gretel's mom. Um, so I had met him before through mutual friends, and uh, he's always been very nice and sweet and helpful in the animation world. But then I, I got to audition for this character and I went in for the callback and I did my homework and, and learned what this character should sound like. And luckily I got it. So I've gotten to work with him for the past two years on this new show. We're on season two right now. So I, I feel very lucky that, that I get to do that because I always wanted to work with Disney and Dan's super um, creative. And so is, uh, well, all his writers, but I'm friends with one of them, Joanna. And um, so, you know, it's just, it's a wonderful thing to get to work with fabulously creative people. Yeah, he's fantastic. Like, so probably like one of the most talented people. Like, yeah, incredible. I just thought that was so awesome. I was like, hey, I know that person in that TikTok. So I thought that yeah. was really cool. Fun. Um, so when, so oh man, I lost my train of thought there. Um, you're good. You're good. <laughs> you got you got excited thinking about Dan. Yeah, I did. I did. Yeah. <laughs> he's got me speechless um so, so shatterline uh that game i really take i took a liking to and i thought it was fantastic and then obviously it has one of my favorite voice actors in it um how did that oh when was that timeline because i hadn't even heard about shatterline until like it came out and then i made a tiktok about it and then it did really well because of you i'm pretty sure Oh, oh nice yeah but how did that how did that come about oh gosh you know it's so funny i remember watching interviews of actors years ago and they'd be like they'd ask them how do you feel about this and they're like we filmed so long ago i don't even remember and now i get it because oh, yeah. i filmed oh, yeah. i recorded this a year and a half ago okay about a year and a half ago and you know it was just two or three sessions it's funny they weren't they weren't as long as uh as the valorant or overwatch like mm -hmm. or even uh the the carla stuff for dead island too um i, I do, it's funny I, I i i don't know i don't know i auditioned i definitely knew i wanted to make her sound a little bit different to raise because i mean once I go into my Brazilian accent, it's it's really hard to to find a different sort of yeah. tonality for it. In Spanish, I can do it, but I feel like Brazilian's very nasal, so it, it's hard to find nuance in that. And so I knew that she was a little bit, not that Ray's is not sexy, but she, uh, Brisa was a little bit a little bit more sultry or like mysterious, while Ray's is just like wears her heart on her sleeve and mm -hmm. is a little crazy. So um, you know, I know she sounds similar sometimes, and it's just it's. It's, it's just what happens but uh i really enjoyed working with them they were based in the ukraine this was right right before the everything went down over there so um i hope they're doing well you know mm -hmm. um and i hope people are playing it i hadn't even heard about the game either until i was recording and then boom it was out it was it's mm -hmm. such a funny thing you know mm -hmm. um when it when it comes to just a curious question of mine when when you were first starting and you were recording stuff like as a voice actor and you had to wait for things to come out as you do. And I, you probably maybe more used to it now, but like, was there a moment where you were, are, or are you still like antsy for things to come out and like be able to tell people not be under NDA about something? I mean, I was lucky with Overwatch and Valorant because I, I recorded those characters. I was almost the last to record always. <laughs> so like for Overwatch, the game had come out and I didn't even know it was out. 
And then like I recorded and within two months they, they launched Sombra. And then for Valorant also like four months, boom, it was out, you know? So I didn't have to wait too long. Mm -hmm. um, I've been working on a video game for years now where we can't say anything and that's driving me nuts because I feel like I was probably one of the first to record Oh, yeah. So they're, fail they're figuring out all their stuff. They're casting all the other characters. And I'm just like, uh. And then I didn't hear anything for a while. And I'm going, I wonder if that game's still alive. Like, we don't know because we can't just call up the friend and be like, hey, what's going on? So, uh, but that's that's kind of how it goes, you know. And, and if we're lucky enough, there's many things kind of that we're waiting to come out. So they'll just come out at different times, you know. Yeah, and um, you always have something coming out in a way. Hopefully. Yeah, it's not yeah, yeah. Case, you know, but absolutely, yeah yeah um yeah because i feel like i feel like one of my weaknesses as like knowing something is just not being able to to keep it in like do you have do you have to like i don't know do people do voice actors like tell like therapists or something or like just have to tell someone to get it out i mean sometimes we'll find like if we if we've like um find in at a studio like i'll see a friend above me and i'm like wait a minute are you working on this too and then like we at least get to know oh mm -hmm. we're working on this thing together you know um for the most part though i mean i'll just i might tell a friend like yeah i'm working on a new video game they're made by whomever mm -hmm. like i got i'm on a new riot project but like i can't say anything else so yeah you know um i guess some people tell their therapists but we've just learned that like it's just fun work that'll come out at some point you know yeah absolutely um uh, moving back what what were some of the key things um about the the first like overwatch for, uh versus the two experience on everything from your point of view um like recording and like is it was it a lot more exciting because you knew like you had already had this ex established fan base with Overwatch and you're excited to share it for the second time and like what were some of your thoughts there? I mean, I think I always prepare myself to not get overly excited because we just don't know how something's going to land. Mm -hmm. Like I'd worked on a million projects before Overwatch 1 and you know, maybe they didn't turn into huge things or I worked on GTA 5 and like my character's not huge but she's still pretty cool. But, like, it's not like my fan base grew or, like, it was a big pop. So when I was working on Overwatch and then it came out, it was, like, a surprise that it was such a big thing. Yeah. And I liked that I didn't have an idea of what it could be. So that way we don't, like, create false expectations to what mm -hmm. might turn into something big and then it isn't. So for Overwatch 2, I just had hope that um, new gamers would want to play because it was a different format of sorts. And then it was, like, you know, free to play. So that was exciting. But... I try not to worry too much about like what's going to happen because we don't know, you know? Mm -hmm. And for so long, so many fans were just like, oh, we're tired of waiting. Like, when's it going to come out already? And that that feeling stinks, you know? So I was just like, let's hope that the wait has been worth it. So it was just positive thinking. And uh, I'm, I'm glad that people are excited with new voice lines or they like the kind of new sleek looks and the skins. Um, I feel like now they've really gotten on target and, and they're, you know, new characters are coming out and they're constantly sharing new stuff. So I don't know. It's just excited, exciting because we don't, we don't develop the game. We don't create any of that stuff. So we're really um, in the dark about that. Yeah. But it's also exciting at times, I'm sure for you to, to see something new that you didn't know was coming at. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Anytime we get a new skin, I'm like, whoa, I didn't know that was coming, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, you... Yeah. So it's definitely, definitely cool. Yeah. You're a fan as well of, of that stuff so i think that's sure. really really cool um so some valorant talk um how how has it been keeping up with that um for you over the past like you have you have a lot to keep up with you have a lot of communities that you have your foot in yeah um how has the valorant side been for you um it's been sweet in that like the last couple of conventions I've been to, I feel like the high school kids are really excited about Rays. So I feel like it's a younger demographic. Mm -hmm. um, or maybe 
high school kids were playing Valorant and they've grown up. And so there's like, a, I feel the age difference now, but I feel like I got a lot of kids in middle and high school going, oh my God, you're raised, whoa. And then they freak out and they're so excited. And I feel like it's just, that's really sweet. And so I kind of like, I like that they just have this really young energy that feels really generous. I don't know how to explain it. Um, I love that Ray's uh, is dating Killjoy and that they've made that, mm -hmm. you know, canon. Uh, so many people would always ask me about it. And I'm like, I think I'm pretty sure, but I don't know. So the fact that they've like made that clear is, is special. Um, I don't play, you know, so it's hard to mm -hmm. keep up with like, all the changes in the game, but I just kind of like knowing the lore and what's happening with the characters. Um, so that's that's about the extent of it. I, I, mean, I, I follow all the Twitters and the Insta tags so that if something new comes out, then I can keep track, you know? Mm -hmm. I think it's, I think one of the most, the, the coolest things to see, especially in, oh, I was looking at uh, your stream, is it Streamly? And the, the some of the, fan art and stuff like just the art is just incredible and i know i think chamber had had put up some that like fans had made like though that stuff has to feel so cool to see like sombra and rays in the same picture that someone drew yeah. like that's yeah. got to feel so good yeah i i love it and i feel like those characters are so different I mean, mm -hmm. Carla's different too, but I love that these ones just like, they feel like polar op opposites in terms of personality. Um, I do love the fan art. I get very excited because uh, Ray's is very colorful. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just feel like I've seen a lot of really pretty art with her. I, I, I just love the community when they're not, because I'm not a gamer, I don't deal with the toxicity that happens, you know? <laughs> and so the community generally is nice to us. Sometimes they're like, I hate your line, cringe, ew, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, that's part of it. But um, for the most part, I just like engaging with, with the community because of the fan art, because of the cosplay. Oh, my gosh, the cosplay is so cool and beautiful. Uh, I met this guy whose friend did a little boom bot. Oh, yeah. And they did this whole thing on, I don't know if you saw it on TikTok. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. crazy. I, I think uh, so, yeah. Yeah, and so I'm just like, God, you're so talented. So I love I love that there's people out there doing stuff like that. It's just like, you know. Yeah, I know one of my one of my mutuals on TikTok. I think you might have like commented or something. Her name's Mia Mouse, and she, yeah, she does a really good raise cosplay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and I sure. I told her the other day I said she should do Ray's nails as her nails because Ray's has some pretty cool like like nails. yellow. Yeah, and I was like, you should do that too. I think that would do well on TikTok. So, yeah, yeah. So maybe sure. we'll see that. But just know that was my yeah. idea. Love it, love <laughs> it. You get credit. <laughs> um, all right, I'm gonna. I have some raised voice lines for you. Um, do you want me to? I can send them to you, or I can tell them to you. Whatever one works. If you want to just uh, send them in the chat, sure. Okay. All right, I'll do that. Um, I have a couple, and if you don't want to do all of them, if you want to do all of them. Sometimes it, Zoom, if I go too loud, it like cuts it out. So you gotta let me know if you hear it. Okay. Um, let me just. I hope it. Okay. Yeah, they should be. Um, okay. Sectioned off. Okay. Am I just going one after the other? Um. Yeah, if you want to. Cool. Color for Q. Paint check. Charges check. Brakes. <laughs> Nowhere in sight. <laughs> I don't have any splints. I may have jammed my fingers. Multiple fingers. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. That raise has some good inventions. We'd love to pick them apart. Reina. Or maybe I say Reina in English. Reina. No. Reina. Me amor. What happened? Who hurt you? Perfect. Sometimes I forget the cadence of certain lines. Like uh -huh. I say colorful kill all the time. I do the paint check, charges check one a lot. But I have totally forgotten about the, that race has some good inventions. I love to pick them apart. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever heard that one in game, but I saw it and I was like, I yeah. think that's a good one. So it says that that race has some good inventions. Yeah. Love to pick them apart. It's cute. Uh, yeah, that is cute. Um, yeah, I, I feel like, I mean, obviously, you probably recorded some of these so long ago. And that, oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> yeah, 
and so like there's no way you could remember the cadence and stuff like I that. I mean, because she, I'm the character, you know, I, I, I remember a lot of uh, stuff I did, but like, for example, for Colorful Kill, we recorded three or six um, mm -hmm. versions, or nine sometimes, and so they choose what goes in game. So unless I'm talking to a gamer or I hear it online, I don't really know which one they chose because mm -hmm. it could have been Colorful Kill, Colorful Kill. You know, like, and yeah. so then once I learn which one is in game, then I can remember that. But um, I, oh my God, for the longest time, I was saying my ultimate for Sombra with a different like thing song. And then finally a game, a gamer was like, Hey, by the way, in game, it's apagando las luces. Cause I was doing it totally differently. Cause I didn't remember which one they'd chosen, you know, uh, that happens. I, that probably is the most common thing that's told to me, by the way. Like I, everyone is always like, before I do this, just know that it's probably not going to be exactly how you think yeah. it's going to be. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I get it. I, I've, I've heard this speech before. It's fine. Everyone's still yeah, going to love it. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, I think that's, that's all I got for you today. Um, I appreciate you coming and talking. Um, yeah. You've always been so sweet to me and answered my questions if I've had them. And that's, that's meant so much to me. And uh, I love your work, and I'm I will forever be a fan. So I appreciate you coming to talk to me. It means a lot. Thank you. Uh, I wanted to plug my movie if you're interested. Oh, absolutely, yes. Um, I've been uh, I was working on uh, an indie film for the last two years. It's called Morgan's Mask. I didn't write it or direct it, but uh, it's about a gamer and a cosplayer going through the pandemic on her own, and you know she hit some some challenges in life and deals with some depression. So. Uh, the film gets a little bit dark, but ultimately it's about finding your passion and reconnecting with your loved ones and maybe getting out of a toxic relationship if that's what's happening. So um, I felt inclined to make it because it was about like the gamer community that I've met and a lot of the stories that I've heard are similar to Morgan's story. So anyway, there's a lot of fun little uh, kind of gamer stuff happening. She plays Overwatch for a little bit. She cosplays some Mercy at some point. Uh, there's some Star Wars references and, you know, just fun nerd culture kind of all around. So um, it's going to be coming out tomorrow. Um, yep. On Apple and iTunes and Amazon Prime TV, Amazon Prime Video. Um, so I'll be sharing all that stuff on my on my socials and YouTube and all that stuff. So yeah. just just like to let people know. And that I will also be in the description. And I know, are you in this next Valorant signing? I am. I haven't okay. posted about that yet, but I will be doing it. Okay. May 12th. Yeah. So yeah. those those both will be down in the description Love if you it. guys want to get a print and uh, see the movie. Uh, I will definitely be watching that now. That uh, coming out tomorrow, so I'm excited. Um, cool, cool. I appreciate you um, plugging that and telling me about that, um, and also coming on. So uh, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Bye. Thank you guys, and thank you.